Hi everyone. I wanted to give you a short update on the work of United Purpose, an organisation that I'm extremely proud to lead. So for many of us around the world, we're dealing with a number of challenges, worries, fears, and kind of having our lives transform in front of us. Now the communities that United Purpose works for, they're facing the same challenges, and then even more. So when you're living in communities with very poor health systems, food insecurity, refugee camps, no or very limited access to water, no sanitation facilities, no soap, and overcrowding, you can just imagine the challenges that lay ahead are vast. Now United Purpose, alongside a host of other amazing organisations, are responding in every way that we can. The approach that we're taking is threefold. So firstly, it's how can we respond right now to slow infection rates and limit the number of people that get infected. So we're doing this through health messaging, through building of water and sanitation facilities, providing access to hand soap and tackling misinformation. We're also providing um, face masks and food ahead of severe lockdowns. The second part of our response is the doing, and mainly our, our role there is to ensure that there is food security, that people can still eat, and that the health messaging continues. And then it's the third part is the what happens afterwards. So this is the part where communities are gonna need to rebuild and pretty quickly. And for many that are already living in deep poverty and inequality, it's going to be quite a mountain to climb. And so we need to double our efforts around creating livelihoods, better health, preventing exploitation and disaster preparedness in order to ensure that we can keep those communities moving forward after this is over. So I just want to tell you a little bit more specifically about what we're doing in each country that we work in. So in Bangladesh, we work in the Rohingya refugee camps where there's more than a million displaced people. And as you can imagine, in a refugee camp, social distancing is incredibly difficult. Access to water is limited, as is sanitation. And so we are working hard to provide 30,000 litres of water per day and hand washing stations. And we're also trying to ensure that we can spread the correct health messaging and work within the limits of a refugee camp to ensure that people are keeping as safe as they can. Then we're also working through our women's business centres where we've started a campaign sewing face masks. So our 164 centres in the Hill Tract region have produced or are going to produce between eight and 10,000 masks by April to distribute amongst those communities. In Brazil, we are focusing on disseminating health messages to low income communities and supporting the distribution of food parcels or meals to the same communities. And in the more medium term, we're gonna be looking at supporting women-led businesses and smallholder farmers to get up and running again after this crisis is over. In Cameroon, we are using our community networks and committee groups together with our youth social media channels to educate people about the virus, how it spreads, the symptoms, and how you look after yourself. In the Gambia, we are using our strong community networks to reach rural populations with information about COVID-19. Some examples of this are that we're using our project WhatsApp groups to disseminate key health messages. We're printing and disseminating posters. We're conducting hygiene demonstrations and providing hand washing containers with soaps. We'll also be holding radio phone-in shows in rural areas with regional health authorities and religious leaders to ensure that people understand the correct health messaging. In Guinea, we're, we are part of the National Health Coordination Against COVID-19 and we're working to provide health messages and manage the risks that we've learned through our experience of fighting Ebola. In Malawi, the team are working on prevention posters for illiterate people as the literacy rate in Malawi is still only 62%. This is really important to ensure that people are getting the correct messages. In partnership with UNICEF, 
at Malawi has become the first NGO to start implementing an emergency preparedness project. So this project is looking at providing access to safe water, sanitation and hygiene practices to prevent the spread of COVID-19 in emergency treatment units in all four key hospitals. We're also looking at ways in which we can ensure that throughout this virus epidemic, we are able to provide um, food. In Senegal, we are reaching rural communities by delivering important health messages via local radio stations into mobile phones. And through our project with street children, we are using funds that we had previously had planned for circus classes that have now had to be cancelled due to the ban on gatherings to purchase mobile hand washing stations, bleach and essential food items to ensure that Quranic schools are sanitised and that the children can isolate within them and still have access to food. In Mozambique, we'll be working with communities already heavily impacted by last year's cyclone to provide hygiene kits, raising hygiene awareness and providing vegetable seed kits for kitchen gardens to mitigate the risk of hunger. As part of our social accountability work, which we do a lot of in Mozambique, we're also going to be engaging in advocacy to ensure that the government is spending the budget they have for COVID-19 in, in the right way. In Nigeria, We've been working with a rapper, Sunny Neji, to create a song about hand washing and coronavirus. And we're going to be making plans to share this across local radio stations and social media. And we're going to continue to scale up our already amazing work around community-led total sanitation. We also work with partners through a partnership with KCA. So these are partners working in, across Africa and India working specifically with communities affected by HIV. And so in unprecedented times, these partners are having to continue to provide vital, dignified services for those who are still needing to access their treatment and support for HIV. And in the meantime, also trying to ensure that the right health messages are there and that they are prepared to be part of the response. Our Sports for Good programme in Kenya through an amazing partner Moving the Goalposts are using their staff and coaches through digital channels to encourage girls to stay active while they're self-isolating and disseminating information on how to stop the spread of COVID-19 for the International Day of Sports for Development and Peace, MTG are going to be inviting participants to post videos and share themselves at home to try and continue to encourage people to be active and healthy. Now the work that we keep doing is going to evolve as this crisis evolves and how we respond will change. But I hope you can see that we are trying to fight back as hard as we can for the most vulnerable and our staff working on the front line are just incredible and brave and are doing amazing things in the world. So thank you so much for taking the time to listen and please stay safe.